Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Tuesday, August 24th with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. All right, today we have 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, uh, to chapter 2, verse 17. But I call God to witness against me. It was to spare you that I refrained from coming again to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, for you stand firm in your faith. For I made up my mind not to make another painful visit to you. For if I cause you pain, who is there to make me glad but the one who I, whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, so that when I came I might not suffer pain from those who, who should make me rejoice. For I felt sure of all of you, that my joy would be the joy of you all. For I wrote to you out of much affliction and anguish of heart, and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know about the abundant love that I have for you. Now if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but in some measure, not to put it too severely, to all of you. For such a one, this punishment by the majority is enough. So you should rather turn to forgive and comfort him, or he may be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I beg you to reaffirm your love for him, for this is why I wrote, that I might test you and know where, uh, whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. What I have forgiven, I have, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. When I came to Troas uh, to preach the gospel of Christ, even though a door was opened for me in the Lord, my spirit was not at rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, like so many, peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his son. Alrighty. So, uh, Paul, um, kind of the, the main focus in, in the first half of, of this section is... Um, kind of the the pain he feels uh for having um written to them previously and 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 calling them essentially to um uh to do their to <laughs> well, let me jump ahead Ca calling them to love one one another and loving their neighbor why is this causing pain well um because there is um one among them who uh needed to be rebuked and um was called out by the congregation, and now, um, you know, this, so he says, the punishment by the majority is enough, you should rather turn to forgive and comfort him. So, um, if you, you know, if you recall in the, in the first letter to the Corinthians, there was a lot of, um, you know, Paul calling out their division, their lack of unity, um, the uh, sexual sins that were going on, and there was a lot that he was correcting them for. And of course, um, you know, this, this, it's hard work. It's hard to do. You know, it, well, <laughs> if, if you are, if you are rebuking somebody out of love, that is a difficult thing because, and you know, nobody likes to be rebuked. Nobody likes to be told that they're doing the wrong thing. Um, and, you know, oftentimes they will conflate that with, you know, you not, not loving them, you, um, being mean or whatever. And it can be a very difficult situation. Um, but what we see here uh, with Paul here 
is first that um, when we call somebody out on account of their sin, calling, asking, or um, calling them to repent, you know, it is always supposed to be coming from a place of love. That it is not, um, it is not coming from a place of anger or um, I don't know. Just it's it's not meant to be kind of a, a punitive sort of thing. It's it's meant to be a corrective and and a, a loving thing. Um, and it should always be for the purpose of forgiving them. And I think that's probably the key point in this in this text. That is probably the one thing that we should be focusing the most on, because um, I think too often you know we we are so laser focused on being right. Um, getting things right, being in the right, whatever. Um, so when we call people out on account of their sin, say, oh, you are sinning, you need to stop this. You know, and, and with the desire that they repent, um, the, the follow-up there with the whole point being so that they may be forgiven, that you may be for, that forgive them, um, sometimes gets lost there. Um, and I think you see that with... With certain certain people, certain church bodies, definitely more focused on just calling people out, um, and sort of saying that focusing on well, once you once you correct everything, once you you know get rid of all that sin, you know, and stop doing it, then you will be you know made acceptable to Christ, and everything will be great. Uh, which kind of misses a lot <laughs> and overlooks a lot. Um, First, the idea that you you can you know stop sinning. <laughs> I mean, it's you're you're a sinner. You can't stop sinning. Uh, that's that's not <laughs> you you can certainly strive to avoid sin and all that, but um, there will always be sin in you. So it kind of for, uh, glosses over that, but just that um, the whole purpose in this is is to have people be forgiven. I mean, that is to hear the word of God and to believe it is to be forgiven to hear Jesus say you know from the cross I forgive you and for you to hear that and say I believe that um, that's that's the point and so whenever you are in a position where you need to call somebody into repentance uh, they rebuke them for their sinfulness you know, always remember that this is a loving act um, and and you should treat it accordingly you know so when you when you rebuke them when you call them to repentance do so lovingly you know make extra sure to to know that um they are probably not going to be receiving it lovingly so you might need to work harder to present it lovingly um you know you shouldn't just assume well of course everybody knows i'm doing this out of love rarely <laughs> does anybody realize you're doing it out of love um especially when there's the ones in the crosshairs so we should go out of our way to um, assure those who we are um, dealing with that we are coming from a place of love. So that's part number one. Uh, part number two would be that we we follow that up with the forgiveness of Christ, our forgiveness. That um, we know that it's not simply to, um, you know, the, the goal in, in doing this is not to... How do I say this? I was going to say not get them to stop what they're doing because, I mean, that is what we, we hope and desire is that they stop that sinning. But, I mean, to be forgiven, to be restored, um, that's kind of the, that's that's what we're pushing towards. Because out of that um, hearing the forgiveness, receiving the forgiveness, clinging to that, um, that is where the Holy Spirit would work through to um, give them the strength to be able to not sin like that anymore to to refrain from that sin to the best of their ability so um it's kind of you know you're looking at two things so yeah, it's like refraining from that sin being forgiven we want both things to happen um i would just lift up the forgiveness a little bit more <laughs> you know focus on that um trust the holy spirit to do his work and uh so now that 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 Category, that uh, prioritization that that might be more my uh, my personal preference coming through, but um, certainly in in this text here we see that uh, Paul um, in God's word is saying that um, you know the, the the point is is to be f to to forgive them to um, you know let's see um, you should rather turn and forgive and comfort him or he may be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow so there you go <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there we go. Let us pray. 
O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord, and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Hope um, hope this is a benefit to you uh, today. That gives you something to um, to uh, kind of feed into your devotions today. Have a wonderful Tuesday, and until tomorrow morning, peace be with you.